Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Canon FTBN, going over the features, controls, and how it all works. The FTBN was introduced in 1973. It was a minor update to 1971's FTB, which was an update to the Canon FT of 1966. The biggest improvement was that the FTB and FTBN have full aperture metering, while the FT had stop down metering. The body weighs 750 grams or 1.46 pounds. So let's get started as I usually do when talking about a camera. We're going to start on the upper right side as you hold the camera. First, we have our shutter speed dial, which goes from 1 1,000th of a second down to 1 second, and the B setting for time exposures. You will notice that a 60th of a second is in amber. That is your top speed for synchronization with electronic flash. We have our film speed setting here. It's marked ASA. Uh, today we call it ISO. All you have to do is lift up the ring around the shutter speed dial to set your ISO. Okay, we're going we're gonna to leave it set here at 400. Your ISO range is from 25 up to 2000. Right back here, you will notice this little mark. That is our film plane indication. That is used if shooting macro photography in order for you to calculate the loss of light from extension tubes or a bellows. Now as we go along, I will be pointing out improvements from the FTB to the FTBN. There's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of difference. All right, so right here next to the shutter speed dial, we have our shutter release. And this is one minor improvement. The, um, Shutter button is a little bit larger. Right now it is set to A. If we set it to, here, let's advance that. If we set it to L, okay, as you see right here, the shutter release is locked. The shutter release is threaded for a standard cable release. And even though it is set to lock, you can fire the shutter with the cable release. Okay, so you know that. Normally, of course, we're going to have it set to the A position. I'm not sure what A stands for, um, but you know that that is unlocked. L is locked. Okay. All right. To the right of that, we have our advanced lever, which advances the film, cocks the shutter, and operates the frame counter. It's about 174 degree throw for your advanced lever, or you can use several smaller strokes. Okay, another improvement over the FTB is the plastic tip on the advanced lever. Okay, that's it for this side of the camera. Now we're going to come to the front. Let's make sure that shutter is cocked so I can show you a few things. All right, on the front here, we have self-timer lever. This is a, a bit of an improvement. This one is styled after the Canon F1 self-timer lever. Okay, so it's about a 10 second delay. So you just push it down, press the shutter release. And if you want to jump in the picture or if you have your camera on a tripod and you want to use this, and it will take the picture. Now, this is a multi-purpose lever. All right, if you press it towards the camera, I hope you could see that, you will notice, let's try it at a different angle, it will stop the lens down. Okay, if you want to do depth of field preview. All right, so you just push it towards the lens. But it also has other functions. Okay, you could lock it in place. There's another small little lever here at the bottom. We just bring it over to the L, and you will notice 
that the lens remains stopped down and has even another function. We bring it over one more time to the M and it actually locks up the mirror. You really can't see that through the lens here, but now the mirror is locked up and then Using a cable release, your camera's on a tripod, you use a cable release, release the shutter. There's going to be less vibration because the mirror going up and down creates vibration. You have your camera on a tripod using a long exposure, uh, macro photography, whatever. You just use a cable release with the mirror locked up and the lens already stopped down. All right, so that's a nice feature. To release it, you just bring it back and notice the lens, the, the mirror drops back down and the lens opens up. Now, one other thing. If you're going to use the self-timer and you want to also have the mirror locked up, you should lock up the mirror after setting the self-timer. So let's bring the self-timer lever down. Now we're going to push this all the way over to the left. You see the lens stops down, then we bring the lever over to the M for mirror lockup. Okay, now, make sure I cut the shutter, I didn't. All right, so the, now the mirror is up, the lens is stopped down, and the self-timer will fire the camera. So this lever right here on the front of the camera, which in most cameras is normally just a self-timer, does several things. It's a self-timer, it's a depth of fill preview button, and it's a mirror lockup. So really nice feature. Okay, so that's it for that side. Now do you notice this QL here? That stands for quick load. You will find that some Canon cameras have that QL on them for quick load. When we get to loading the camera, I'll explain how that works. All right, we come over to the other side of the camera. Very simple, we just have a cover for the PC outlet to plug in a flash, okay? Let's come back to the top of the camera. We're going to get to the lens mount in a little bit, but let's come back to the top of the camera and we have a hot shoe. Okay. Now, to the left over here, we have a three position switch. All right. Off, that means the meter is off. On turns the meter on. And we'll get into metering when I talk about the viewfinder. And then we have a C position. Okay, and that is a battery check. It's not the simplest battery check. There's certain things you have to do. One, you have to set your film speed to 100. And I'm not going to go through all that right now. You set your shutter speed to 1 1,000th of, of a second. You move the switch to the C position. And in the viewfinder, if the meter needle swings to the meter index point, which you see here is that little square towards the right lower portion of the screen. If it swings to that index, the battery is okay. If the needle goes below that index, then the battery should be replaced. Battery will last a, normally a year under normal use. Now, let's talk about the battery a second. And uh, by the way, the battery compartment is right here on the side. Okay, it took, back when this camera was introduced, a 625 battery. It is a 1.35 volt mercury battery. And those batteries are no longer made. There are replacement batteries for it. There's the wine air cells, but they have the proper voltage, but don't last very long. Some people try. Uh, various types of batteries, such as a hearing aid battery, but this meter, I, I, honestly, I don't have a battery for it. I'm not sure whether it w works or not, and a lot of these old cameras, it doesn't. Uh, so while we're talking about that, let's just talk a little bit about the meter, and the meter uses two CDS cells to measure a central rectangular area that in the viewfinder is shaded, as you can see here. It's about 12% of the picture area, okay? And you will notice to the right, there's a needle and a circle. When the circle and the needle line up, you have proper exposure, and you do that 
by turning either your shutter speed dial or your aperture ring. Nice part about this meter is you know exactly what the meter is metering. And you also notice in the viewfinder there in the center, and I know this is a little hard to see. I don't have a really good picture of the, um, the viewfinder, the inside of the viewfinder. You will notice a circle in the center. It's lighter than that metering area. That is a microprism spot for focusing. Okay, also on the top left of the camera here, we have our rewind knob and crank. You use this to rewind film. There's a tiny little arrow here that's pointing in the direction you turn it. You turn it clockwise to rewind film. We'll get to that a little later. Okay, to open the back, you just pull up on the rewind knob. All right, we have a horizontal traveling cloth focal plane shutter. I will get to loading the camera in a minute. I just want to go over the bottom of the camera. Very simple. We have a standard tripod socket and the rewind button. So when it's time to rewind film, you must press in that button. Now let's look at the lens mount. This is a Canon breech lock lens mount, the same as the Canon FT, the same as the Canon FL lenses, but this is an FD lens. FD lenses were introduced with the Canon F1 of 1970. And the big difference was the full aperture metering. Now this is an FL lens. This was the previous line of lenses for Canon cameras. They will mount as well. And the breech lock, you basically line up the red dot on the lens with the red dot on the front of the camera, just below the end on Canon. And then you turn the silver ring, okay, to the left. And it works out pretty good. Not as quick as a bayonet, but almost as quick. But when you use these older FL lenses, you must use stop-down metering. So if your meter works in the camera, you're about to take a meter reading, you have to push in on the self-timer towards the lens to stop the lens down, take your reading, then you could let go to take the picture. Or you could lock it in place, as you know how to do that now, okay, using the little lever below the self-timer lever. lever. Now, a little later on, I'm not sure exactly when, I think maybe around 1980 or 81, Canon did a little change to the lens mount again, and they went basically to a bayonet. And those are the Canon FD, new FD lenses. Canon new FD lenses. They're not marked new and on here, but you will notice there's no silver ring. There's no silver breech lock ring. With these, there's a raised red dot. Simply line that red dot up to the red dot on the camera and just twist in place. So it became a bayonet mount. So this camera will take all three style of lenses, the FL, the FD, and the new FD. All right, so let's put, and then there is a button on the lens as your lens release, since there's no lens release button on the camera like most cameras with a bayonet mount. All right, so let's put the FD lens back on. Okay, and one, uh, one of the nice things about FD lenses, or even the FL lenses on, on Canons, is they have half-click stops. Okay, many cameras do not. All right, now we're going to show you how to load the camera. But before you load a roll, you want to make sure there's no film in the camera. Okay, especially if you haven't used it for a while. You may have had a roll in, forgot to take it out. So what we're going to do is just unfold the rewind crank and just turn it. If it turns freely, so freely that's turning, there's no resistance whatsoever, that means there's no film in the camera. Okay, so we're going to leave that crank unfolded. We're going to pull up on the rewind knob, and the back springs open. Now, you will notice a detail here that, to my knowledge, no other camera has other than certain Canons that have that QL designation. And you notice this plate here. As you open the back, that lifts up. And you also notice this red mark here. When you're loading a conventional 35 millimeter camera, you drop the film in here, okay, so no change. Put your rewind crank down, and then rewind knob, you put the rewind knob down, and then just bring the film over, and you have to stick it into one of the slots on the take-up spool. 
Well, with the cannon, you don't have to do that. You just bring it over far enough to be opposite this red mark. You then close the camera, and this plate comes down and secures the film. It's foolproof. Okay, so now the camera, the film is in. We're going to advance to make a few blanks. And notice the rewind knob. The rewind knob is turning, the film is loaded properly. But again, unless you don't bring that film all the way over to that red mark, that's the only way you could screw this up. All right, bring the film over to the red mark, close the back, and the camera's loaded properly. All right, and again, look at that rewind knob as if it's turning. That is, make sure it's turning. If the rewind knob is not turning, it means you probably didn't bring the film over far enough to line up with that red mark. Open the back and redo it. Okay, so let's just fire off a few blanks here. All right, okay. Now, it's time to reload the film. When you get to the end, the advanced lever is gonna stop. Don't force it, okay? Should not be a lot of resistance here. You're gonna feel some, because the film is being advanced, but if it goes, let's say, this far, and now you can't go any further, stop. You could possibly pull the film out of the cartridge completely. It's taped in there, it's possible. It's rare, but it's possible. Okay, so now you know you're at the end of the roll, you took 36 or 24 great pictures. Turn the camera over, press in the rewind knob. Make sure it stays in. I don't know, every once in a while the rewind knob's not gonna stay in. Just press it again, make sure it stays in. Unfold the rewind crank, and just wind your film back in. Now, I don't want to wind this completely in. I felt like it pulled off on the right side, and it did. I use this roll for showing people how to load. All right. I just want to make sure I went over all the changes to the FTBN over the FTB. I mentioned um, larger shutter button, the plastic tip advance, the F1 style self timer. There was one more I forgot to mention. In the lower left of the viewfinder, you will see the shutter speed, okay? The selected shutter speed. It's in the lower left corner, kind of angled. Okay, so that is it for the Canon FTBN. A really nice, well made, all metal construction camera. There are tons of Canon FL and FD and new FD lenses available for this camera. The lenses are excellent. You should have no trouble finding these cameras on the used market. So if you have any questions concerning this video on the Canon FTBN, please leave your question in the comments below. I respond to all questions. And also, you could send me an email. My email is in the description below. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And if you have an FTB or an FTBN, I'd like to hear what you think about it. If you're still using it today, does the meter work? And what type of battery you may be using? Okay, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I usually publish a new video every Monday and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So thanks for watching.